pleasant day. It's Alicia, and I'm here for another Bible study. Today we'll be studying Jeremiah chapter 7. Before we begin, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the mighty name of Jesus, under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. We present ourselves to you, Father, and we applaud your name. We lift you up. We exalt you. We give you all the glory and honor due unto you. We rejoice because, Father, you have seen it fit to give us another day, one in which we can come before your face, seek your face, and reflect on our ways, one in which we can connect with you, one in which we can ask for your pardon, one in which we can ask for your help so that we can continue to live in accordance with your will, so that we could continue to live so that you could be pleased with us, with our, with, with, our, with our life, with the life that we're living. And Father, one in which you can correct us, you know? You can correct us. If you, if, you, if you realize that we're going the wrong way, you can warn us. You can send us warning. You can, you can let us know so that we can be corrected. And Father, we also acknowledge the fact that your love for us is everlasting. We acknowledge the fact that your tender mercies are always with us. We know that your kindness is eternal so we are grateful and father we are so happy because you've redeemed us you've redeemed us unto yourself you've drawn us in close in to you because we're your little children and so we desire to do the the things that are pleasing to you father we desire right and so father we submit ourselves to you today we confess our sins father we repent of them holy spirit we ask that you do the sweep for us let us confess them let us name them because father we are aware that our adversary is always accusing us so we don't want to miss any sin. Father, also give us the wisdom to know when we are erring so that we could know to call out to you for help, to help us before we actually fall into sin. Let us see. Let us give heed to the Holy Spirit's guidance in our lives. Also, Father, help us to realize that you have provided salvation for us so that we could accept Jesus, so that we could confess our sins unto him, so that we could receive pardon, so that he could cleanse us from all unrighteousness, so that we could be presented before you, Father, blameless. Hallelujah. So, Father, we ask that you blot out our transgressions, anything that would otherwise cause us to be separated father we ask that you remove it remove the stumbling blocks from our way and father today as we are just as we are we ask that you guide us in our walk today guide us in our journey father we, we request that you not only let the holy spirit fill us up holy spirit we we, we 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 welcome you holy spirit holy spirit find habitation within us holy spirit dwell fill us up holy spirit so that we could be in oneness so that we could be drunk on you holy spirit breathe upon the words that we're about to read let the interpretations let the messages that that our father wishes for us to receive or receive also let us understand 
how much we need you in this time, especially in these days. And Holy Spirit, throughout the day, keep the word in our mind. Keep the word in our heart. Plant them on our soul. You know, plant them on good grounds within our heart, soul, and mind so that they will bear fruits in abundance to give honor and glory to the Father. You know, Holy Spirit, help us to always be seeking after you, you know, so that we could never be satisfied. We want more and more and more of you. That we want to be saturated with you. Yeah. And you know, no matter what we face today, Holy Spirit, help us to remember we have you. So in the moments when we're feeling any kind of aloneness or helplessness, hopelessness, or any kind of negative and evil feeling should be trying to invade us, you will block it and push back the evil away from us because you have given us your good gifts, Holy Spirit. You know, and so we welcome your gifts, Holy Spirit. We, we are happy for your gifts. And so we ask that you pour out your gifts upon us in abundance so that we will be enriched by your good gifts. And so Holy Spirit, we ask that you help us for those of us who don't yet know her purpose or what we are called by, what your gift for us in the ministry is we ask that you help us to find that reveal it unto us you know because you're the giver of this good gift our gifts so we are grateful yeah and we, we we will submit to you and you will help us in our in our gifts guide us in using our gifts for the honor and glory of our father you know King Jesus, we cannot leave you out. You are our king. You are our savior. You are our spouse. We are grateful. We are grateful. Your love that you have poured out for us is always a comfort to us. So we're grateful. And so as we go through today, King Jesus, let your will be done in our lives. Exactly as how you desire to be, let it so be done. Whisper your words of love to us and help us to, to whisper words of love back to you, yeah? Because we're in oneness. And King Jesus, we can never thank you enough for your, for your love, you know? So help us to get to know you better. Help us to seek after your commandments. Help us to honor them and live by your words and be filled up with your words and your, and your, and your mercies, you know? Help us to know that there is nothing greater. There is nothing greater. So we're grateful. We're grateful. So today, Father, as your little children, we come to you. We come to you. And we ask that you bless us. We ask that you sanctify us. We ask that you cause your face to shine upon us, Father. We ask that you be pleased with our lives today. Help us to live in you. So that we could be, you could be pleased, so that you could be pleased with our lives, you know? And Father, whatever mercies I have failed to mention, and whatever I would not have the fortitude or the knowledge of to seek, to request of you, to also put in your care, Father, everything that we are, we submit to you. So whatever I've left out, Holy Spirit, I know you will pray for us. Father, I know you will grant our wish according to your desires. I know you will also bless us in areas that we have not even requested. And I know that you will supply our needs in the ways that we have not even considered. So, Father, I trust you wholeheartedly. And as you are the children, we are going to rest securely in you confidently knowing that you are you're our father and you care for us and so father because we're going out into the world where we're going to be besetted on every side by evil we ask that you continually keep your edge around us let us wear your 
righteousness, not as a blanket alone, but let your righteousness be established in our hearts. Father, we ask that you stamp your name, bind your name as a seal upon our lives, bind them upon our hands, bind them upon our foreheads, bind them upon our hearts, bind them upon our souls, bind them upon our mind. Stamp your name on every single area of us because we are your children right father as for the enemy you know how to deal with the enemy we don't have to worry about the enemy you have already taken care of yes yeah, so we give you honor we give you glory we are grateful because we know father that you you are the one who is doing it and so as we go for it we ask that you go with us lead our way Go ahead of us too and prepare the way for us while we, we proceed. Be with us in our going out in our coming in securely. And Father, we are praying in Jesus' name, our favorite name. <laughs> and so Father, we ask that you wrap our prayers in the blood of Jesus. Wrap our prayers in the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Let our prayers come before you, Father, and be sweet savor. You know? So that you will be pleased, you will, you will accept our prayers, that they will be pleasing in your sight, Father. And that we know you will grant us um, the, the, the request that we have made, because we made them in Jesus' name. But not only because of that, but because you so desire to do so concerning us. And so, Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus. We are grateful. And as we go forth, continually put your hand of love upon our lives so that we know that we are always in your presence. And so we pray this prayer in Jesus' name. We sign this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's begin. Verse 1. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Now Jeremiah is a prophet of the Lord. He was called when he was very young. I would say very young, like a child, but he was a young man, right? So he was called to prophesy, right? Now, Jeremiah, he, sometimes they call him the weeping prophet because <laughs> he prophesied they didn't even listen to him. They, <laughs> they torture him, they did they imprisoned him, they did all kind of thing to him, you know. But you know what? What we can be sure of is that having been called by the Lord, having been prepared by the Lord, having been wholly devoted to the Lord, he may not have lived a, a very pleasant life, you know, because here he was. A very shy and you could say he didn't have all that much confidence in him at first yeah but the Lord emboldened him so that he was able to speak regardless you know and so he witnessed a lot of a lot a lot of terrible things that had happened to Israel he witnessed those things so it was like he could weep because, yes, he has witnessed the turning away of his people. He has witnessed the destruction, the total destruction of his people. And he has also witnessed them dancing their way to the death. Even though he stand there crying, warning, rising up early, beckoning to them. They did not listen to him at all. Let me tell you, if there is ever a prophet to really consider the life of, like, like his prophecies, where it fell on deaf ears, it was it would be Jeremiah, <laughs> because the people did not listen to him. And you know what? The Lord let him know that you know these stiff naked people will not listen to you. And as we go through this chapter, we will get to see the reason why they would not listen because <laughs> we are in these times as well. 
right? So when you go to minister to someone and you go to say to them, you know, Jesus loves you. Jesus cares about you. Jesus desire to be your savior. They, they will be, they, they'll, they'll probably look at you and call you silly. And what you're talking about is Jesus and, and where you think he is. You know, they will probably mock you too. And this is what I want you to understand. All of that is okay. Just make sure you, you actually minister. Because you see, the thing about it is, this, it's a spiritual event, right? A person's conversion. So you may think that the person, it did not fall on good ears. They did not hear you. But the Holy Spirit has planted a seed based on your sharing. And then what will happen is maybe at a time when the suffering gets really hot, <laughs> they'll remember your words. <laughs> it's, sometimes it happens like that. Sometimes they just don't listen to you. They don't, they don't care and they go headlong to their death. And that's why, I, that's why I'm always saying we mourn them. We mourn them. But when they have died, there's nothing more we can do. Because we have already done. But that is only if you have exhausted every opportunity to share. Yeah, this is why we are. We could take a page out of Jeremiah's book. They didn't listen to him. He know they wouldn't listen to him, but he still prophesied. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So let's continue. Verse 2. Stand in the gate of the Lord's house and proclaim there this word and say, Hear the word of the Lord, all he of Judah that enter in at these gates to worship the Lord. So here the Lord was telling him, go and stand at the gate of the temple. Yeah? <laughs> so these prophecies could be called the temple gate prophecies because they were turning in to worship the Lord. And he is a prophet of the Lord. So the Lord is telling him, stand at the gate of the temple. So even before they turn into worship, they would hear the word of the Lord. Why is this significant? Because the Lord is even willing to meet them before they come before his face. So that they could examine their ways before they come before his face. So that their conscience could be pricked. So that they could have an understanding and repent before they even come to seek his face. Because these people, they were just going about the motions of worship. They were just going about the motion. They really didn't wholeheartedly go to the temple to worship. You, know? you will see that as we go through. So this is why the Lord um, told him, go and stand at the gate. Go and stand at the gate. Because these people, they don't even understand who the Lord their God is. They don't even understand. You know? And because, because of what the Lord knows would happen. Because the Lord knows how he would execute his judgment. That's why he told him, go and stand at the gate and prophesy. Prophesy unto these people. They will have to hear you because they want to pass by you. To go into the gate, they will have to hear you. Prophesy. You know? And so... <laughs> At this time, it's just Judah, right? Because the temple is in Jerusalem. This is, this is before the captivity now. So at this time, it was only Judah because Israel, the northern tribe, has been carried off already into captivity. So now, you would think that having witnessed the northern um, country gone into captivity, this would be a sobering event for, for Judah. Not so, not so. No, sir. They were just persisting in their behavior. They didn't see, they didn't see the error of their ways. And such it would be this time. You could be pointing out the very obvious thing and a person would be looking at you like, what are you talking about? They, you see, spiritual blindness is a thing. It's an actual thing. Spiritual blindness, and we must assess ourselves continually to make sure we're not spiritually blind and how you can have spiritual blindness is by participating in sin right because sin darkens your life and brings about a blindness to you so that the things of god you will not readily understand them yeah so let's continue 
Verse 3, thus said the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, amend your ways and your doings, and I will cause you to dwell in this place. You see, the Lord will always extend his mercy towards us, particularly when he knows he's going to execute judgment. You see, why, why is this? Because the Lord is merciful. If the Lord could warn you a thousand times and you will yield and heed his word on the thousandth time, he would withhold his hand. He wouldn't consider the fact that, well, why didn't you listen from the one? The Lord is not like that. He will give you time and time and time and time and time. Why? Because he desire that you repent. Why? Because accepting his forgiveness and accepting his pardon is much easier. In fact, it is better than having to face his wrath. You see, the Lord knows his wrath is not going to be turned away until it is full. Right? So when the wrath of God begins to take place, if there's no, okay, Lord, you've rained enough. Stop. No, 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 no. You can't tell the Lord what to do. The time to listen, you did not listen. So the time for him to rain on your life, he will rain on your life. Whether you want to listen now or not, that's on you. But he already said judgment it is, judgment it will be. This is why we are cautioned. This is why we are cautioned. To give heed unto the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit knock on our heart, don't go saying, well, I have time. Come back later. You see, because you may very well not have time. In fact, the Holy Spirit may be knocking on your, on your heart because the Holy Spirit knows that this is the time for you to die. In like maybe in the next few hours, that's going to be it. So the Holy Spirit incessantly knocking. Like there have been stories of persons who were like before something tragic happened, like they did not die, but before something tragic or life changing happened, like there was this incessant, this, 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 this incessant feeling to pray, this incessant feeling to repent of the sins, this incessant presence telling them, call on Jesus. You know, it, it was just persistently plaguing them to call on Jesus. And they happened to yield, you know, because they were just saying, well, it, it's just incessant. So they just they said, okay, you know what, for the sake of peace, let me call on Jesus because this, this, the feeling is just incessant. So they, they, they call on Jesus. And at the moment they call on Jesus, without them even knowing what would happen, tragedy struck. But because they call on Jesus, Jesus saved them from, 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 from death. Now, sometimes these people are among people who have actually passed. And what I can tell you is that when the Holy Spirit is knocking on the, the, the hearts of us, the Holy Spirit is not going to pick two persons and, and let, let the rest perish. No, the Holy Spirit is going to knock on everyone in that same vicinity's heart. A lot of people would not listen to and some people's heart are closed off they can't listen they, they have they have been so deaf deafened and, and blinded by sin that they cannot even discern or hear the voice of the holy spirit besieging unto them repent 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 you know so because the, the thing is the lord is going to warn you he's going to warn you but will you listen though like some people will give their account like they were they were doing something, they're persistently doing something, and the Lord keep warning them, stop doing this thing. Stop this lifestyle. Stop indulging in this lifestyle. Stop. And you know, it's just at a moment when they decide, you know what, I'm gonna listen. I'm gonna listen. Like, especially people who love to go to like parties and, and, and public events and so. People who used to always be going, always going, like, like, especially for a favorite artist or whatever. So they may be following up this person everywhere they go, they're going. And then the Lord will have said to them, do not go to this one. And, you know, it's not a, it's not a matter of questioning too much. They just have the incessant feeling, do not go to this one. And they just follow. Some people say it's a gut feeling. It's the Holy Spirit. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it's the Holy Spirit. So they say, 
do not go, do not go to this thing. And then they will say, oh my, when after they didn't go, total tragedy struck. And they'll be like, what? I, I, I had a feeling. And, and then, no, listen, now, they'll be like, I know, I know something was going to happen. But really, actually, that's not, <laughs> it's not that they knew something was going to happen. It's that they had that feeling that the Holy Spirit kept telling them, do not go, do not go. And because they decide to obey, they end up being spared from tragedy. I, I mean, they, <laughs> we don't have to look far. A lot of people will have these accounts. And this is not just for Christians, right? Why is this important? Because we have to remember the Holy Spirit is, Jesus' salvation is worldwide for everyone. So the Holy Spirit will appear unto everyone in their own way of understanding. So the Holy Spirit will appear to you the way he knows you will understand, right? So the Holy Spirit may, may appear to me and, 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 and speak to me directly, right? Because, yes, I am, I, am, I am yielded to the Holy Spirit, you know? My life is subjected to the Holy Spirit. So that I will hear the Holy Spirit in my, in my, in my mind and, and feel him in my heart and in my soul, I will actually know he's there. And I, because I have an intimate connection with him. But not everybody have that. So for the average person, they will hear the Holy Spirit in their mind. They, if they don't have the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit, they will not feel him. Right? Sometimes they feel the presence of him though. Like he will overshadow some people. Not, not in a forceful way. But to shield because a lot of times... People, let me tell you, the Holy Spirit shield us from a lot of things, you know, from a lot of things. So there may be a calling of the Lord on your life, but you have not accepted the Lord yet. And the Holy Spirit is guarding you, safeguarding you still. Why? Because the Holy Spirit knows, because God knows everything. The Holy Spirit knows that after going through a certain period of time, you're going to turn. So the Holy Spirit will even guard you even before you surrender. We're not supposed to take it for granted, though. We're not supposed to take it for granted. Oh, the Holy Spirit will keep me regardless of ever because you don't know your end. That's why you don't take it for granted. So if you're feeling the Holy Spirit calling to your heart, do not harden your heart. Open your heart and receive the Holy Spirit. Actually pray to the Father and ask him to let the Holy Spirit um, come into your life. You surrender your life to Jesus. You let the Holy Spirit come into your life. Because, you see, a lot of times people are expecting the Holy Spirit to come with tongues. But remember, as I said, the tongues is just one of the gifts. Right? Not everybody have to have the tongues. So, sometimes a lot of people offend the Holy Spirit because they think the only manifestation of the Holy Spirit within their life is tongues. And we have to be mindful because... There are tongues that are not of the Holy Spirit. So a lot of people go chasing off the tongues so badly that they end up with demons. Right? And demons know tongues too. So we have to be very careful, right? So submit your life unto the Lord. The Lord is speaking to you in many ways. Change. Turn away from your evil ways. Stop doing what you know you're not supposed to be doing. Don't, don't wait until the tragedy come to you. Then you're crying out, Lord, help me. Because as you will see, as we go further in this, the Lord will not hear you sometime. He eh? will, will be merciful, you know. But when he sees he's executing his judgment, he's executing his judgment. Because he has to be just. He's a just judge too. Merciful Father. Merciful Creator. Just judge. Right? Because for those people who have not surrendered unto Jesus, he's not their father. He's their creator. The only persons who can call him father are those persons who have given their life over. Believe in Jesus. Because Jesus is the only way. So, and, and that's why a lot of persons will be saying, Oh, but I don't feel that God is that close to me. If you have not surrendered, you will not feel he's close to you, but he is close to you. But you have to surrender. When you surrender, then you know for a fact. It's like just the same way as our, a child know the parent is a parent 
without having to second guess anything. It's the same way when you surrender. You know the Lord is your father. You know. You know God the Father is your father. You know it. You know it. You know it. Yeah? And you are very sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit because you know the Holy Spirit is the one who bonds us all together. Yeah? So when the Holy Spirit is telling you a many ways, a many ways, listen, a many ways, right? A many things that you're doing, right? Because the Lord wants to bless you and to continue to shine upon you. But if you, if you have too much of stiff, stiff nakedness and you, you're being stubborn and you want to do your own thing, you, you, may, you, may, you may find that it will not be pleased, um, pleasant for you. You may find that you, 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 you are but destroying yourself. Yeah, as we go forth, you will see what I'm talking about. So let's continue. Verse 4. Trust ye not in lying words, saying, The temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord are these. What do you mean by this? <laughs> we have it in today's world, you know. We have it in today's world. A lot of people, they're trusting in the church. Hey, my church, my pastor. My pastor, my church. And they're going, and they're going, and they're going. I have to go to church. I have to be there. I have to. We are having this, we are having this wonderful convention. We're having this wonderful meeting. Oh, we have some visitors coming to us. We have to make sure that the house of God is this. And the house of God is this. And the house of God is this. And the house of God and the temple of the Lord, which is themselves, is empty. The Lord is not there. The Lord is not within their temple, but they are so busy on fire to go to the house of God. Yeah, the house of God. Yeah, the house of God. The same thing for Israel. They were trusting in lying words. And once you see lying, you know who's there, the devil. So he was deceiving them through his agents. And so they were being so, so based in their worship. In fact, they stopped trusting in the Lord himself and start putting all their worship and adoration on the temple of the Lord. You see, idolatry is not always sometimes it's, it's very subtle yeah so we had to examine ourselves continually to make sure we are not giving god's honor to to something or someone else right this is why i keep cautioning persons stop worshiping your pastors stop worshiping your spiritual leaders as you call them stop it Stop, because you are giving the reverence due to God to someone you're not supposed to. And they're not supposed to take it, you know. But this is how you know false prophets. They soak up the praise of men. They live for the praise of men. That's how you know a false prophet. There are many different ways to know a false prophet. They love money. <laughs> I always point out that one. <laughs> so I see it in this ministry. The Lord wants to bless you, but you have to extend your hand. Utter nonsense, utter rubbish. How you can bribe God? The Lord blesses us every day. Every day. You cannot go tell the Lord what to give to you when and how and how much. He blesses you according to how he sees fit. And there's nothing you can do. Even if you empty out all the substance of your house, you cannot then tell the Lord, fill you up now. No. No. Right? Obedience to, his, to the Lord and obedience to his word and living in him. That's what you need to do. And stop this nonsense about sowing seed. I'm telling you, it's, 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 it's one of the things that the false prophet do so often that I know persons can readily identify that I'm telling you. Right? A lot of persons have lost their way because of these false prophets. They listen to them wholeheartedly. And then they decide, you know what, I don't want nothing to do with God anymore because God is this and God is that. When you really actually, did you trust God in the beginning? Did you really trust in God? Or did you trust in the man of God? Did you really trust in God? Or did you trust in the house of God? See, it's the same thing for these people. They were going into the temple. The temple of the Lord. They're adoring the temple. They're worshiping the temple. They're giving honor and glory unto the temple. And they don't realize they're taking in the splendor. Because remember, no, no. This is Solomon's temple. Well carved out. Well decked out in, in, in a lot of precious stones. And, and yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But they don't have the Lord in their heart. 
but they don't consider the Lord when they're doing their own private matters. And see, the Lord is watching everything you do. The Lord cares more about what you're doing when you're not in the house of God than what you're professing to do in the house of God. When you think the Lord is watching you. A lot of people, they have the misconception to think the Lord doesn't see them when they're outside the house of God. You know? Yeah? So in the presence of the congregation and in the presence of the, 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 the man of God, you're going to live circumspectly now and you're going to let your prayers be perfect now. But then you don't even self-pray outside of that. But then you don't even self-seek the Lord's face concerning your life outside of that. But then you don't even follow his commandments. Yeah, for us particularly, the commandment of Jesus, which sums up all the other commandments. Yeah, you have to keep the commandments of the Lord. You have to trust the Lord. You have to live your life in accordance with his will. Because if you don't, all this going to the house of God and claiming you, you're in the presence of God. What presence? Which God are you talking about? The demons have you well wrapped up. Yes, they do. And this is a lot of people, they confuse the presence of evil with the presence of the Lord. But the Lord is merciful and he extends his mercy. That's why he's cautioning persons, do not trust in lying words. If you know that the thing is a lie, do you need anybody else to come and tell it's a lie? If you hear somebody prophesy something and you know that it's a lie, do you then need somebody else to come and tell it's a lie? We have wisdom. Let, let us let us exercise the wisdom that the Holy Spirit reveal unto us, yeah? And let us listen to the Holy Spirit as well, yeah? So let's continue. Verse 5. For if he thoroughly amend your ways and your doing, if he thoroughly execute judgment between a man and his neighbor, see? The Lord is taking things away from the temple now. He's taking things away from the temple into your daily living now, right? And he's saying... If you amend, if you thoroughly amend your ways and you're doing, so not partially amend it because you want the Lord to favor you. So you you, you change part, but you leave the rest. So you so you change the part that other people would see, but you leave the part that nobody ain't watching. So you change the part that um everybody could name out, but the part that only you um only you know in secret you leave out. No, you you, you see you amend all your ways. Thoroughly amend them, not partially, partially amending. Thoroughly amending them, and you amend your doing. Bearing in mind, the Lord is beholding everything. Yeah? And the Lord is watching how you interact with one another. The Lord is watching what you're doing concerning your neighbor. You know, okay, this is what you can see here. Because a lot of people miss it, you know. A lot of people miss it. The two commandments are here, you know. The two commandments are here in these two verses. Verse 4 speaks specifically about the first commandment, the greatest commandment. Love, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy soul, all thy mind. Not the things of the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God himself you should love. You understand? If you do that, you will not be worshipping no man of God, no, no, no house of God, no things that are called by God. That's serious. And then, immediately following that, the Lord is talking about what? Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Why? How you know that? Here he's talking about how you, how you execute judgment between a man and his neighbor. You, because you see, in those days, people used to take advantage of people. They still do. In, in today's world, we don't have to look for it. I mean, they still do here, you know? And it's like, when a person is defenseless, they treat them very bad. They take away what they have. They they, they, they find some kind of loophole to, 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 to take away what they have. And they, they you know, they, they think nobody sees and nobody knows, you know? So somebody coveting another person's things, they go and steal it. Or they go and kill the person for it. But see, sometimes the, sometimes the person don't go and commit the murder like themselves. Sometimes they do it behind the scenes. Sometimes they do it behind the scenes. Sometimes they do it in a spiritual way too. So they, they, they go and work witchcraft to make the person fall. Sometimes they actually go and hire somebody to do it for them. 
the joint league, the joint company, they form a band to tear down someone, right? So you will have somebody come in and say, oh, this person did this, this person did that, all to get a person's things in it. And then when they go to a court of law, they, em they employ a lawyer that is very good at lying. And they get the person's things. And guess what? They go and they go and they, they, they're feeling very nice that they have gotten what belongs to someone else. You know who's watching? The Lord. You know who's going to execute judgment? The Lord. You know who's going to make sure the person who suffer not cry in vain? The Lord. We can trust that. You see, when the Lord is ready to judge people, he don't make no joke. And he executed exactly how he sees fit. This is why we have to watch. Did I telling you? Amen your ways. Amen your ways. Be careful how you're executing judgment. In fact, that's why Jesus tells us, do not judge. Because see, when you, when, you, when you want to put yourself in the place to be the judge, you yourself is calling judgment on yourself. Especially if the Lord ain't given no, no, no cause to, 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 to execute no judgment, no? So let us let us amend our ways. Let us learn from this because let me tell you, hmm, it, it, it did not go out for them at all. So let's continue. Verse 6 If ye oppress not the stranger, the fatherless, and the widow, and shed not innocent blood in this place, neither walk after other gods to your hurt. So here the Lord is going into more details about atrocities that were taking place. Now, if you know anything about the, the precepts laid out for Israel, the way the Lord desired for them to be set apart, you would understand that all this they're doing, all this they're doing, are the very things the Lord wanted them not to do. So things like taking care of the strangers, right? Because the Lord actually, in every single tribe, the Lord actually have a set of cities, not just one, a set of cities that were designated for strangers. In fact, it doesn't necessarily have to be strangers outside from outside of Israel. But say for instance, someone is running from one tribe. So somebody's running from their own tribe because they have committed a crime and they're running from their own tribe because they don't want to face the, the, um, the judgment. Another tribe was not allowed to turn them away. They were allowed to let them go into the city designated for, for those people refuge those kind of refuge you know mm -hmm. so um it, it, it's not that they were gonna hold a murder in what they were gonna are they were gonna hold the evil people no what they were doing is like sometimes like things would happen and the person would have they're they're wrong they, they have done something wrong they're wrong but Maybe it was done in like the heat of the moment or something else. Something else that you could say, okay, they would not be given a fair trial if it is assessed immediately. Right? And so that they do. They go and they they um they would go and take refuge. Now you know when Saul was running after David, pursuing him in every side. These people were not supposed to expose his location, but you know they violated that because they feared the king because he would have caused them to be killed. So you see, sometimes the breakdown would take place. Where they're supposed to protect the refuge, they end up giving them up. <laughs> yeah, so... But here, it was a different level now. They were actually oppressing them. So you have, they know they're strangers. They know they don't come from the area. They oppress them. Because of that, they oppress them, right? The fatherless, they have no father to defend them. And if you know anything about Israel's system, if you don't have a father to defend you, and 
the Lord becomes your father. That's that's a, that's the system of, of God, you know. He is then your father. So therefore, you're supposed to be cared for and protected. Because what you will find that in these cities that the refuge and, and, and this, the strangers, the fatherless, the widows and those, in those cities that they would dwell, these are the self-same cities that were allotted to the Levites. Right? Levites were allotted to these cities. Why? Because the Levites would, would be given a portion, the Lord's portion would be given to the Levites. And what the Levites would, would do now, when, when each tribe give the portions of the Lord to the Levites, they would then share the portion of the Lord with the strangers, the fatherless, the widowed, all those kind of people, the people who are without anybody. They would share anything that belongs to the lord that they receive they would share with them because the lord provides for them the lord keeps them so the lord has a system in place for all the people who were quote unquote defenseless yeah the lord will not look too kindly for nobody oppressing them no sir mm -mm. the lord loves everyone you see so here he was cautioning them you know if you do not oppress the strangers, not because they're not from among you, not, not because they're not from your area, not because they now come to be beside you. Do not oppress them. Right? Do not oppress the fatherless because they have no father to stand up for them. Do not do it. You see? Do not oppress the widow because... They, they have no body to care for them. Their husband have died and they have no, no more covering. This, this, this was particularly true for the barren widows, right? The barren widows that have, they did not have children, right? They did not have anybody to look for them. Or the widows who have, they had children, but their children have died. So they are left to the care of the Lord. And then you have those that they could not remarry because after certain years, after certain years have passed, if they're not in the childbearing age, they have, nobody may want to marry them. You understand? So they, 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 were, they were left to go into these cities, especially if they were not um, able to keep their husband's estate. They were allowed to go into these cities because what used to happen is there, there were there were different rights that were given to protect like the inheritance and so but if the if the wife is not from the tribe she could not claim the land of the husband because she she cannot take it over but the, the, what was supposed to happen one of his kinsmen would the next of kin, it will go to the next of kin. And then he was supposed to take care of the widow. But sometimes they didn't want that responsibility. So they, they put the widow in the cities that is due to strangers for the Levites to take care of them. Not the best of circumstance, but, you know, people are just people. They will do what they want. But the Lord really looked down on, on, on the, the fact that if you, if you, if you, if you oppress them, so, so you have driven them out from before your face into these refuge cities. Why then are you still oppressing them? They have no defense. Why then are you still oppressing them? Why are you still oppressing them, you know? So the Lord was not looking too kindly on that at all. Then another thing that the Lord does not look kindly upon is shedding innocent blood. Right? And he says, in this place, what? He's talking about the temple too, you know. But he's talking about the entire place. The entire land of Judah. So he's saying, do not shed innocent blood. What constitutes innocent blood? Right? There are a number of offenses that results in a person's death. So if it is not an offense, if a person did not perform an offense, do something that warrant their death, justly warrant their death. They ought not to be put to death. This innocent blood 
also covers children which a lot of a lot of people are just killing their children just because they they, they could kill them which is very very vile you know and so you have them killing the prophets too which is considered innocence because they are the messengers of the lord you see they're, they're the servants of the lord so why or why are you going attacking them and killing them because they prophesy against you ought not to be done so the lord was not looking kindly upon that plus any other person who did not do you any wrong and you rise up against them and and kill them the lord does not look kindly on these things does not look kindly on these things at all. And remember, the life of a person is their blood. Right? So the Lord is very keen to observe what happens to the blood of a person. He's very keen to that. He is watching to see, are you, are you, are you abusing them? You see? Are you causing them harm? The Lord is very careful to observe that thing because he loves all of us, yeah? So he says, neither you should walk after other gods to your hurt. Why? Because if they go and take up with idolatry, they are hurting themselves. Because the minute they take up with idolatry, they have lost God's favor. And idolatry is the worship of the enemy. And the enemy has no part in him for God's people are God's children. He doesn't care anything about you. He will want to just destroy you. So this is why God is cautioning them. Do not go seeking after other gods. Because the Lord knows who these other gods professing themselves to be gods are. You know, that they are fallen angels. That they are demons. That they have the devil. So the Lord is aware what, who they are. And he's telling these people, do not go seeking after them to your own hurt. Because why? Number one, Israel is a set apart people. Israel had already split into two parts. Northern kingdom gone into captivity because of their own vile behavior. Blatantly and, 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 and unrepentantly performing idolatrous acts. They were all for idols. Now Judah is left. And the Lord is saying, do not go seeking after these idols for your own hurt. Because one, you are called by my name. The very fact that you're called by my name and you're going serving these things, they will hurt you. They will despisefully use you and abuse you. They will cause your debt. They will cause not only the debts of, 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 of a few, they will cause the debts of a lot because they will require the debts of innocence. They live off the death of innocence. That's how vile the devil is. The devil will want you to kill your own innocent children. Very vile. Very nasty. Yeah? All the idols. That's what they had in common. All of them seek after the death of innocence. Vile. Very vile. Very vile. And then they go, go to war. Because you had some of them who were gods of war, according to them. They went to war to slaughter innocent people. You listen to them? They, they, they literally required the actual sacrifice of a child. They did require it. Yeah? Another set of them, they didn't care if it was a child or not. They just want to kill people. Right? In fact, the people worshipping, they were expected to shed their own blood too. This is why the Lord was cautioning people not to go seeking after these other gods who would actually require their hurt. Does the Lord require our hurt? No. The Lord requires our obedience. So let's continue. Verse 7. Then will I cause you to dwell in this place, in the land that I gave to your fathers forever and ever. See? See it says, telling them, if you obey, if you obey all I said no. I will cause you to dwell into this land that I've given to your fathers forever. That was a promise. You obey, you get to stay. Because the Lord is the one who gives the land to them. And in fact, some of these practices the Lord was cautioning them against are the very practices of the people that the Lord drove out of the land. 
They were blatant idolaters. They were very vicious and wicked. They didn't care about the Lord at all. So the Lord was there cautioning them. If you obey what I say, if you do what I tell you, you will get to dwell in the land. If not, we'll see what happened. Let's continue. Verse 8. Behold, he trusts in lying words that cannot profit. See? The lies of the enemy. They profit nothing. You have to, you have to look at it. Look at it. A liar come telling you that they have something great in store for you. If you only worship, if you only trust, if you only do this or do that. Remember, the person telling you this is a liar. What would you do? Can you trust the words of a liar? Can you? Can you really and truly trust the words of a liar? This is how the devil behave. But you see, it's even worse because you know what? The devil comes working his defiled acts, bewitching people, seducing them with evil, making it look attractive and enticing to the heart that's turned away. You see? So this is what the Lord is cautioning them. Do not trust in lying words. Because if you have itchy ears that is picking up to listen to lies, if your ears are most sensitive to lies, take it, eh? Take it. Take it. They cannot profit anything. In fact, Rather than profiting, you will suffer a great loss. You will suffer a great loss rather than profiting. So the Lord was cautioning them. So let's continue. Verse 9. Will he steal, murder, commit adultery, and swear falsely, and burn incense unto Baal, and walk after other gods whom he know not? See, the Lord listing them out, you know. Are you going to steal? Are you going to murder? Are you going to commit adultery? Are you going to swear falsely? Are you going to go burn incense unto Baal? Are you going to walk after other gods that you know not? These gods did not carry you out of captivity. They did not provide for you in the time of your sojourning. They did not bring you to this land. And provide you with this land. A prosperous land. That has been kept that way. For you to come benefit. You see. The, the mindset is one that. All the good things the Lord has done. These people take it for granted. Allow themselves to be seduced by a lie. Simply because they want to be like their neighbors, which the Lord warned them not to. Because, let's go down into it now. You see, those who are serving the devil will want to let you believe that they are living a good life. Those who are serving the devil want to make you think this is the best thing you could ever do. And, and, and you're missing out. And they, 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 they're telling you all kind of exploits. Those that they think they can tell you, because they can't tell you everything, eh? Those that they are allowed to tell you, they'll tell you, oh, you don't know. I'm this, that, 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 that. Mm. Mm. If they even allow self to tell you, oh, to write that they're serving the devil. If they even allowed. But it would be pervading, or they would not outright tell you. They will tell you, like, oh, I am doing this, and I'm a part of this group. And I'm, they'll tell you, they'll, they'll give you the exploits, like, yeah, it's, everything is nice. What they will not tell you is that they are slaves to demons. They are slaves to demons. They are slaves to demons that control every living thing. Some of them cannot even eat. Can't even eat. They can't even eat. Rubbish is what they consume. The very profane things that we can even think they consume. And... They're not telling you they cannot sleep. 
they're not telling you also that they can't even enjoy the money that they're supposedly blessed with. They're not telling you also that they are not even allowed to go a certain place and to wear certain things and to do certain things. They're not allowed to be themselves. They're not allowed. When they come lying to you, that's the demon in them talking. Lying to you, making you think this is a good life. The deception that they have been deceived by or deceived with is the same deception they give to you. The same deception. This is the reason why if you stand to give ears to these things, you will be drawn in. You will be drawn in, you will be taken in, and you will not know what will hurt you. Right? This is how you have upright people. People who were brought up circumspectly. Once they go making company with these kind of people, they start to steal. You who never steal a day in your life start to think it's okay to steal. Start to think it's okay to murder. Because what? The life of a murder is glorious. In what way? You see them being wasted on the street every day. You see them being wasted and you still think it's cute. You still think it's nice. You see deception, you know. The devil's cocktail, you know. When you're drunk on it, you can't even see your way. Right? Committing adultery. You can't even stay faithful to your, your spouse, your wife or your husband. You're just going around and doing what you want. Don't realize you're, you're abusing your own soul to your own hurt. To your own hurt. By the time you done pass through all this nonsense, you're but a shell of yourself. If you're even if you're even alive. If you're even alive. Swearing falsely, bearing false witness, telling lies, telling lies is the order of the day. Because that is all you do. The deception came that way, and that's how you continue. And this burning incense unto unto Baal. You're seeking after every strange God there is. If you hear that there's another there's another way to get rich, you're, you're seeking after it. If you hear there's another way to expand yourself and enlarge yourself, you're seeking after it. Whatever they, whatever they, whatever they require you to do, no matter what they decide for you to do, you're willing to do it. You're never brought up in that lifestyle. You're never brought up that way. But guess what? You want to amass wealth and you don't realize riches will take wings and fly. You're making all the money, they said no way going. They fly. Who you think make it to make it make, make you rich? Who you think really and truly make you rich? Assess yourself, examine yourself, and trust the Lord. You see, because a lot of a lot of us, when judgment would have come, we're gonna be very surprised to know that the the, 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 the blessings that you think you are getting from the devil, the Lord is who actually pour them into your life. They were actually yours to begin with. But you know what? The devil tell you some lie. Pull a wool over your eyes and make you think that he's the one giving you this thing because you're watching your blessing come into you, you know. And then he come and intercept and trying to tell you some chupiness. Trust him, trust him, turn into him, do this, do that, and he will give you. And so you're getting the blessing and thinking it's the devil and giving the praise due unto the Lord, unto the devil. You will have to answer for it. You will have to answer for it. You will have to answer for it. Let's continue. Verse 10. And come and stand before me in this house, which is called by my name, and say, We are delivered to do all these abominations. You see? Isn't aren't we seeing this today? After doing all those atrocities, come into the house of the Lord and 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 and, and basically saying, The Lord deliver us to do these things. You see? abomination unto the lord is being praised these days as if they are common bread as if they are blessings from the lord these abominations these atrocities as if that is what the lord call you to do as if the lord call you for to sin for him to for him to pardon you and deliver you from them you see this deception this 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 delusion is of the devil is of the devil because make no mistake about it you know the lord is observing because a lot of people think that when they sin in their regular life everyday life 
it is some it has somehow escaped the notice of God. And when they come to the house of God and they're religiously going to seek God face, in fact, some of them would even think that the Lord has given them the, 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 the drive to do or the, the command to go and do the wickedness that they do. They think the Lord has called them to do it. They will tell you, if you are careful to listen, that the reason why they oppress you is because the Lord allowed it to happen. You see, some people are very vile, you know? They're very vile. They are hurting you, killing you, causing harm to you, and then they're telling you the Lord is who allowed that to happen to you. No. Does the Lord allow you to be tested? Yes. But the Lord is not going to tell nobody to come and do these wicked things to you. But what you can be sure of, it will not go and punish. You can be sure of that. Mm -hmm. Rest assured, you can be very sure that the Lord will deal with them. If they don't repent, they'll reap the recompense. Even you gonna be crying for them. When you see your when you see your when you see the wicked being rewarded. Even you are going to be wondering, like, what is what this person doing in the life? Even you go wonder is what happened. Why they've been so tormented and, and, and hurt. But let us continually trust in the Lord. Because one thing we can be sure of is that if we serve the Lord, if we are obedient unto him, it is for our own good. Why? Because we are called by his name. Or do you think that the Lord is going to hurt his own who are trusting in him? He stand up for us. Though others may beat us down and hurt us, he stands up for us. And it does not escape his notice. So when a person is doing harm to you, the best thing you can ever do for that person is pray for them. Because they're going to reap recompense. I'm telling you. Unless they repent, they're going to reap the recompense. So, don't do bad things and then think you're doing it because the Lord has delivered you from whatever he has delivered you from to go do these wicked things. The devil is deceiving you. I'm telling you. So let's continue. Verse 11. Is this house, which is called by my name, become a den of robbers in your eyes? Behold, even I have seen it, said the Lord. Now we know where we have seen this one before. When Jesus was Throwing out them out of the temple. You see? The behavior of them is... <laughs> nothing is new under the sun, eh? The behavior of them is not, has not escaped. Jesus noticed. They were going into the temple with their trade. Bringing in their... their, 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 their <laughs> bringing in their merchandise into the temple of the Lord profaning the temple of the Lord. Why? Because wherever you see merchandise and trading, there is deception and stealing. That's the reason why they are, they are, it is, it is said here, you're turning the house that is called by my name into a den of robbers. Why? Because where you find these robbers, most people who do trading are robbers, you know, they're robbers. They fix the scales, they, 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 they mark up the price or put it where it don't belong. They're selling you counterfeit um, products. So they make you think that it's the authentic, it's the original, while they already watered on the material. Or they stamp and snap and just, just, just snap the label of a something expensive onto something worthless. And then they give you and then they want you to spend the money for the cost of the expensive item for the counterfeit. Where, where are we seeing these things? Traders have these things all the time. Traders have these things all the time. They're telling you, it is a very good thing. It's a very good thing. By the time you wear this thing, it's rotten. Or it's broken. And listen, if you don't examine it properly, they cut it too, you know. They cut it. Why? Because by the time you would have bought it and worn it for a certain time, or by the time you have bought it and used it for a certain time, they intend for you to want another one. So you do what? Come seek them out again and again and again. The people who the people who fixing you fi fixing things for you, they will probably they fix it, you know, but 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 they unscrew another part, but they displace another part. So what? When you when when by the time you use that little bit, 
Next time something has happened, you need the services again. You see, you see what I'm talking about? Well, in the house of in the house of God, they were selling the animals that are due for sacrifice. And they were not making no joke to, 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 to peddle away in the house of the Lord. Robbing people in the house of the Lord. That's why Jesus turned over the table, you know. That's why he turned over the table. Also to fulfill this prophecy, but because it was a very profane thing. Because he was seeing exactly what they were doing in the sight of the Lord. In his sight. Yeah. He was beholding it. So you know Jesus was not going to let them be, you know. He turned over the tables. <laughs> he turned over them. And he, and he let them know, I see what you're doing. You're not really here to serve the Lord. You're only here to make a profit. You're only here for show. You're only here to put on an appearance. You're only here to parade. This is really something the church is today. Only putting on a show. Let us be mindful. The Lord is watching. Let's continue. Verse 12. But go he now unto my place which was in Shiloh, where I set my name at the first, and see what I did to it for the wickedness of my people Israel. So here the Lord was, <laughs> the Lord was born in them. The Lord was born in them. Now, what had happened to Shiloh? Shiloh was, Shiloh is located in the northeast of, the tribe of Ephraim, right? It's in the northern part of Israel, yeah? So, this is where the initial setup of the, the tabernacles were, right? So, they had the Ark of the Covenant. That's where Samuel um, was with um, Eli, right? When the Lord called him. So they, the people used to go to Shiloh to worship because Shiloh was more of a centralized place compared to Jerusalem, where Jerusalem is all the way down to the south. Um, Shiloh was more in the center. Yeah? So the Lord was warning them, go look, go look at Shiloh. What had happened to Shiloh? The Lord executed judgment on Eli and on the house of Eli, right? At the time, you could read about it in 1 Samuel 4. At the time, Eli was accommodating a lot of vile things from his sons, right? They were doing very much evil things. They were profaning the worship of the Lord. They were not only the worship of the Lord. They were profaning the sacrifice of the Lord. So there were some. There was an order to the sacrifice, right? And there were some parts of the sacrifice that that, that were solely to be offered unto the Lord. And let me tell you something: these sons of Eli were not just taking the parts that were set apart for the Lord. They were also taking it before they offered it unto the Lord. They didn't care. They were profaning. They were profaning. They were profaning. They were profaning. So the Lord decided he was going to execute judgment on the house of Eli. The house of Eli was causing the Israelites to, to, to really go astray in their ways. It got to the point where when they were in when they were at war right with the philistines they decided you know what we're not fighting this war instead of calling upon the name of the lord as they should as they as they are supposed to they decided you know what we're losing let us go for the ark of the covenant and bring it here so that it will be with us see because they had a misunderstanding they had a misunderstanding that the Ark of the Covenant was what was their God, was what was their power, not realizing the Ark of the Covenant is not your God. The presence of the Lord dwells in the temple, yes. It's, it's basically, when you read the entire Bible, 
you'll realize that the arc the tabernacles were just a, were just a, a replica of how the Lord's temple is in heaven, right? It's a replica, right? The Lord dwelt in the most holy. Not that he's limited by nothing, but the, the Lord's presence is covered by his select um, seraphims. As, as um, you could read about it in Isaiah 2, and you could read about it in Revelation 2, right? Just how the covering is. Because there's a throne, but there's also a most holy place. Particularly Isaiah, I'll tell you more details. Also Ezekiel. Ezekiel talk about it. You could, especially when the Lord came to him in a vision and, and show him Jerusalem. And when the Lord's presence actually departed from this temple he was talking now. So back to the men now who were in the war. They decided to bring the ark to be with them in the war. And when the, when the ark of the covenant came into the camp, who came with them? Who came with the ark of covenant? The two sons of Eli. When they came into the camp, there was a very big shout from the, from the army because they, they thought now, yes, their God has arrived. So... They, um, they're going to win the war. But what, what you will find is that they were not rejoicing because the Lord God was in their midst. No, they were rejoicing because they have made the ark an item of worship. They have, they have made the ark of the covenant an idol. They have made it an idol. So what the Lord ended up doing was he allowed the Philistines to not only defeat the army, to show that... He, he was not there. They, they did not invite him to fight with them. Right? So he, he, he showed them the Ark of the Covenant cannot save you by allowing them to be defeated and also allow the Philistines to capture the Ark of Covenant. So they brought it into the land of Philistine and put it in the house of their God. That was the biggest mistake because although... The Lord was teaching Israel a lesson. Make no mistake. He's not going to let the, the, the enemies mock them either. Nor mock him by extension. Because by putting the Ark of Covenant in the same house as their God. They're mocking the Lord. They're mocking the Lord. And we know that they were worshipping who? Who was behind the idol they were worshipping? The devil. How can the devil stand before the Lord? So when they, when they wake up the morning, they find the idol face down. <laughs> limbs to enough and all kind of thing before the ark they want no part in it no <laughs> they suffer real grievous eh? <laughs> they suffer real grievous real grievously till they send it away from the midst they kept it for a very long time too you know it didn't just happen one day two day they kept it and sent it around all the cities till they had to say you know what let's send this thing back <laughs> with gifts <laughs> so the Lord was saying, by that time, Shiloh was destroyed. Shiloh was destroyed and the, the Ark of Covenant never went back there. Because what the Lord will do, the Lord will destroy anything that leads the people astray. He will destroy it. So here he was warning them, go and look at Shiloh as a warning to them that if you think the Lord will not destroy this temple, go and look at what happened to Shiloh. Go and look, you know. And it was so interesting because from the time the ark departed from Shiloh, it was a number of years before it even went back into a temple. It was a number of years. In fact, it was David who actually brought the, the ark of the Lord to Jerusalem because he wanted the ark of the Lord to be where, with him where he desired to build a house for the Lord. The Lord didn't ask David to build a house for him, you know. But David desired to build a house for the Lord because David said in his heart, you know what? The Lord has helped me all these years. He has given me wealth. He has given me a house to call my own. I have some place to rest. Let me give the Lord a proper place to be. See, David had a good mind. But the Lord told him, no, you, you can't build no house for me. You, you, you kill too much people. <laughs> 
whether the, whether the Lord helped him to fight and kill them or not, you know, the Lord was saying, no, no, no. You, you can't build my house for me. <laughs> yeah, but you see, the Lord and David was on a different level of relationship. Yeah? <laughs> but David understood. David understood what it meant to be a child of God. He understood. So here the Lord was saying, this is what I have done to them. That were in Shiloh. This is what I had done to them. Take heed to, to, to be mindful. Because if I if I could have done that to Shiloh, where I'd first called by my name, this place that is also called by name, my name, what is this place for me to destroy too? You know, it was letting him take heed. So let's continue. Verse 13. And now, because he have done all these works, saith the Lord, and I spake unto you, rising up early and speaking, but he heard not. And I called you, but he answered not. See? Okay, the Lord telling him, warning him, you have done all these things. You have done all these things. You were warned not to do these things in the first place. Now you not only do them, I wake up early. I wake up early, calling out to you, desiring to speak to you, to correct you of your ways. Calling out to you, you ain't answering. You're persisting in your mad folly. Because you think now that you can have your way as you want it, and it's going to please the Lord just the same. See? Very dangerous. Very dangerous. So the Lord was not having it at all. He was, he was cautioning them. This concept of rising up early. You see, the Lord, the Lord doesn't sleep in. He doesn't need to sleep. But he normally meets his prophets very early. Very early. Right? He will rise them up with a word. Right? Or he, he will give them a vision. Something to that effect. Not that you cannot do it at any other time, but if you know anything, if you know anything about worshiping the Lord, you know that there is a special anointing on early morning worship. When you rise up and worship the Lord, yeah. When you direct your heart to the Lord before you've done anything else, there is something beautiful in that. Yeah. So here the Lord was telling him. You see, I come to meet you, but you ain't, you, you ain't listening to me when I speak to you. You may be wondering how the Lord speak to them. Remember the prophets, okay? The prophets, plus they have the word of God with them. Yeah? Plus the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, especially for our time, the Holy Spirit will be going around and speaking. Knocking on the hearts. It's not now the Holy Spirit doing this thing, you know. It's not now. But they don't want to listen, you see. So let's continue. Verse 14. Therefore will I do unto this house, which is called by my name, wherein ye trust, and unto the place which I gave to you and to your fathers, as I have done to Shiloh. See? So the Lord was telling them, because you trust in this house, you're trusting it so much. I'm going to do unto this house, which is called by my name. I'm going to do unto it just the same as I've done to Shiloh. Yeah? Because I gave this house to you and your fathers. But you know what? You don't care about it. I gave this whole land to you and your fathers. But you don't care about it. You don't care that I have done that to you. You don't care that I've given you, I've, I've, I've allowed you to enjoy this life you're living to the point where you now find yourself being so bold to want to go seek other God. This is what the Lord is telling you. Because you don't understand who the Lord your God is, I'm going to teach you who the Lord your God is. That's basically what the Lord was saying to them. And he was telling them this house will be destroyed just the same as Shiloh. Shiloh was all destroyed that day. He said, no. There, there was nothing left of it, you see. So let's continue. Verse 15. And I will cast you out of my sight as I have cast out all your brethren, even the whole seed of Ephraim. 
see because Shiloh was in Ephraim you see now Ephraim you see Joseph Joseph got the double portion blessing if you notice among the tribe Joseph name is not there but his two sons Manasseh and, and, and Ephraim that's the double portion of his blessing because the firstborn son is supposed to be given the, the, the double portion blessing but Reuben had gone and slept with his father's concubine which is actually Rachel's um and maiden and she had bore two sons for for his father but he didn't care about it you see didn't care about it at all so he basically slept with his brother's mother his father's concubine and he didn't care so because of that he had forfeited his double portion blessing now because he was the first born for leah and he, and jacob had two wives the next one in line was the you know his all-time favorite the first born of of rachel yeah so he was happy to give the double portion to joseph which he did yeah and he gave to, to joseph two sons but what he did he gave the bigger portion of blessing to the second born right than the first born now ephraim is is where shiloh was so here the law was saying just as i cast out ephraim from my sight just as i cast them away from my sight because by now ephraim was a part of the northern tribes that were carried away into captivity so the lord was saying just as i have cast them away from my sight i'm gonna cast you away from my sight you see this is very bad because the, the end, there was not one member of the tribe of Ephraim left in the land. Not one. All of them were carried away captive. And the same way the Lord is telling him, I'm going to cast you out of my sight. Which is what he was referencing, the captivity. What does that mean to us? There are those who believe, I don't know who gave them this belief, you know, but I know it must be the devil because anyway, you see cocktail of deception being served. It, it is the devil's table. You know, some people, they believe that somehow, somehow, they're going to come and serve the Lord and they're going to carry their dirty behavior and their filthiness. If they don't change a filthy garment. They're going to come with a filthy garment and sit down at the Lord's table and dine sumptuously. I don't know who fooling them. But it must be the devil. Because only the devil could give them this, this delusion and foolishness. I don't know. If they believe that the Lord will accept their behavior, they could they could be sure of one thing. Not the Lord. Not the Lord God who create heaven and earth. Not that God. Not Yahweh who is mighty and holy and righteous. Not Yahweh. Some some other some other de delusion. Some other delusion they have. If they think it is that God, they're going to come and present their filthiness to and he accepts it. What the Lord requires of you, you confess your sin, repent of them. Do not continue them. Turn away from them. You cannot come to the Lord and continue your sin and believe that. Oh, the Lord will have to take it because this is how he make me. No, he didn't make you so. He didn't make you so. Your sinful behavior. You're lusting after the world and the things of the world. That's what makes you so. And you have to put away those things from before you when you see the Lord face. Because if you don't, he will rain on you. And he will cast you out of his sight. And one thing I can tell you, we do not want the Lord to cast us out of his sight. Because his tender mercies are true. But you know what? The tender mercies of the wicked is cruel. Of which the devil is in that camp. So, a lot of people, they will find out the hard way that they were not serving the Lord God as they think they were. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. The Lord is holy and he requires his people to be blameless. You can't be coming laden with sin and say you're serving the Lord. No, no, no. 
examine yourself. Examine yourself. And the false prophet telling you that that is acceptable, take note, they're false prophets, eh? They're on the devil's side. So you know which side you're on if you're, if you're giving heed to them. The Lord will cast you out of his sight. He doesn't like these profane things. So that's why he was cautioning them here. I will cast you out of my sight. Okay. Let's continue. Verse 16. Therefore pray not thou for this people. Neither lift up cry nor pray for them. Neither make intercession to me. For I will not hear thee. So this is, this is something that the Lord actually told Jeremiah. But Jeremiah loved to go and weep before the Lord for these people. Similar to Moses, go and weep before the Lord for these, for these people. They're so hardened and stiff-necked and they're so rebellious. The Lord is saying, you know what? Do not even come and pray to me for them. Do not come and cry to me about them because I will not hear you. I will not listen to you. Now you know when the Lord is in his wrath, you know, he ain't going to listen, eh? He ain't going to listen at all. No, sir, no, sir, no, sir. If you want to appease the Lord, you have to appease the Lord before he gets to the stage of wrath. And you know his wrath is building. Every time he be holding this stupidness, the sin coming up to his nostrils, it, it, profane. He cannot stand it at all. When the Lord arrives to do judgment, that's it. That's it. Every foolishness has got to stop. So here the Lord is telling him, don't even call to me and tell me, don't even pray for them. Don't even, do not even pray for them. This is where a lot of people will find that, you see, you have some places in the world, they have, they are so laden with sin. They are so defiled that they believe in their mind that, you know what, we don't need God. We're going to do our own thing in our own way, according to what we want, and we're going to do, and we're going to do, and we're going to do. And then now, tragedy take place. Calamity befall them. And they decide, you know what? Let's join all the church in that area. You know? they, they don't want the Christians, you know. They call them up. They wake them up. Time to be religious now. Um, come and seek God face for us. And the Christians cried to the Lord from morning until evening. The Lord answered them. Eh? The Lord answered them. Eh? The Lord answered them at all. If you cry concerning your own little circle, because you're Christians, yes, the Lord answer. Because he takes care of his children. But you're crying for the world, he won't answer. He will not answer. You know why? Because the, the disgust of their sins has come to him. This is what a lot of people don't realize. They think that, oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna do my own thing and the Lord just let them be in the reprobate man, you know. Because he's not he's not gonna listen to the prayers of nobody calling out for them. Mm -mm. You know why? Because there's a time for mercy and then there's a time for judgment. And be very concerned when you see the Lord answering your prayers, eh? Concerning a certain a certain people, a certain area. Be very mindful. You see, sometimes the Spirit will even tell you, get out from among these people. You better listen. You better listen because the Lord is telling you, I'm going to destroy them. See, a lot of people think that, oh, God is sitting in heaven doing his own thing. He is studying us. Uh, and they think that, oh, well, God is going to destroy the earth at the end of the of of, of 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 this life uh -huh, uh -huh. god execute judgment every time every time if he decide that you see you see i'm sick of this people behavior he go execute the judgment how he see fit who are you to go tell him well you, you, you weren't you supposed to wait until the end of end of this age no 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 no. he doesn't wait for you to tell him nothing you don't tell the lord what to do the lord does what he wants or do you think you're god you see, so this is how a lot of people get it wrong. They, they feed on the devil's cocktail. The madness, you see, that lies that lies have given reason to. And they believe now they're safe because they're having fun and they're and they enjoying themselves. And hey, the Lord is not seen, but the Lord is watching. And when he's ready to execute judgment, who can stand? 
I know I can't stand it. That's why I surrender to the Lord because I don't have no time in this mess. And plus two, the Lord is showing us that he wants to save us in him. He wants to save us. He's extending his hand. Repent and many ways turn from your wrongdoings. Because when I'm ready to reign, I cannot stop. Cannot hold back his hand. Mm -mm. The Lord is just. So let's continue. Verse 17. Seest thou not what they do in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem? So here the Lord is ready now to get down into the atrocities taking place with these people. Because the Lord is observing them, you know. The Lord is seeing what they are doing. The Lord is watching and taking note of every action that's taking place. And here he's telling, he's, he's telling Jer um, Jeremiah, they are doing these things in the cities you know, and in the streets. They are not, you see, there was a time when they used to be hiding. They used to be hiding and doing the adultery in the house or under some green tree in a distant place or in some high um, hills where, where, where ain't, no much, ain't no much people seeing them. So they, so, so they go up in the hills and do their thing. But now they're doing it in the streets and in the cities. They are so barefaced and, and unrepentant and don't care about the Lord to such degree that they have no fear of the Lord in them. You see? So here the Lord is pointing out to Jeremiah. Look what they're doing. Look what they're doing. All can bear witness to it. All can see. So let's continue. Verse 18. The children gather wood and the father kindled the fire. And the women knead their dough to make cakes to the queen of heaven. And to pour out drink offering unto other gods that they may provoke me to anger. So the Lord is very clear on the behavior. What is this the Lord is describing? Hmm? What is this the Lord is describing? This is no other than the worship of Ishtar. A spirit, Whatever name they want to call her. Right? The profane thing. Right? You see people talking about Easter bunny and Easter egg and all those things. All those things are pagan. They're profane. They are profane. If you decide to worship the Lord, you see, they, they, they make it Easter. But it's supposed to be Passover. It's supposed to be Passover. Why? Why is it Passover? It's Passover to the saints. It's Passover to the saints. Because remember now, no, Jesus did not create a religion. Jesus did not create a religion. Jesus extended the family. Jesus was the Passover, the lamb that was slain. We worship him. We celebrate his, 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 his death, burial, resurrection, and ascension. We celebrate. We celebrate. Right? But we do not profane is sacrifice by coming and including all these pagan practices, right? This habit of worshiping Easter was around a long time ago. You see, it's Ishtar, but when they translate, it's Easter. And everybody will be like, "Oh, Easter! This is that." Be very mindful. Which one of the? Which one of the? Which one of the? Traditions are you upholding? Is it Passover? Or is it the Feast of Easter? Hmm? Are you bemourning Easter? Hmm? Because the pagans, the pagans worshiping the Easter, you know? That what they that what they worshiping. The pagans are not worshiping Passover. They are worshiping their Easter. You see? That's why any kind of mixed worship is very dangerous because if people are not aware of the truth, they will end up inadvertently being idol worshippers. We have to be careful. So this, this tradition of baking cakes, yeah? And these cakes were raisined cakes. 
It's not no wonder why people people bake raisin buns for Easter. It's because that has always been the tradition. That is the tradition. Yeah. <laughs> so you find here the Lord is describing because the Lord is not is not <laughs> ignorant of what they're doing, you know. The children gather in the wood. The wood to make the fire. So the children, so they have the children involved in this from very early. Children get in the wood. The father's making the fire. And then the mother's making the dough to bake, to bake the cake to the queen of heaven. Why? Because they, they, they now decide that this is who makes us prosperous. They now decide that this is who allow us to give birth and have these children. They decide this is who allow us to be so to have such sexual prowess. Now make no mistake. Some people refer to this Queen of Heaven as Aphrodite. Eh? Lust and pleasures. They love it a lot. Hmm? But they have all kind of name for this one thing. The same Queen of Heaven. They have all kind of name for, for this thing. But that's what the people are worshipping. That's what. There, if, if, if you really dig down deep into the history of these practices, you will realize that they are so profane that people would even want to associate Jesus with these things. You know that you know that's, that's, that, that's a plan of the devil. You know. You know. Or is it a wonder how all of a sudden a religion emerged from what Jesus had I just extended his family. Jesus established his church, right? His church. He did not. He did not establish a religion, right? Set apart. The church was set apart. So whereas Israel was set apart for the Lord, in order for Jesus to come, Jesus having come. Having sacrificed for us to receive us unto him, all who would believe, believe us, right? Are the church, children of God. Yeah? Jesus did not say, This is how I want you to. Be called. He did not say that. He did not say that. He said, when Peter confessed who he was, he said, upon this rock I will build my church. Church. And the gates of hell will not prevail. You see? Church. Church. Not, no religion. Relationship. Why? Because it's a relationship. If you don't know Jesus, what are you doing? So here he's talking. You see, Jesus is very specific. You know? He's very specific. Right? Be careful that you do not follow the traditions of men. That's what Jesus was talking about continuously while he was reprimanding the Pharisees about their traditions. Because these people were still following the same Silly traditions. In fact, why do you think they make themselves into our world today? Hmm? It's because they are traditions. Think about it. Does the world does the world accept Jesus? Think about it for a minute. Does the world accept Jesus? A resounding no. So why would the world have Easter? The queen of heaven, you see. That's who they're worshipping. That's who they're worshipping. But because Christian was, Christianity was dominating, as they call it, Christianity. The church was dominating. The church was spreading far and wide. So in order to control the spread of the church, they decide, you know what? We're going to just merge with the church. 
to slow them down. Right? And that's what they did. That's what they did. They merged with the church. They claimed that transformation had taken place. But we just, when you examine the supposed transformation, you realize it's a lie because how can you then be transformed yet you continue in your same old ways? Do not be fooled. Do not be fooled by anybody. Do not be fooled by anybody. The Holy Spirit will reveal unto you exactly the truth of the matter. Right? But all these traditions, be careful of these traditions. The Lord asked us to worship him in spirit and in truth. You know why? Why did Jesus say worship in spirit and in truth? Not going to a temple or a building. Because you can worship him in spirit and in truth every single day, anywhere you are. That's what makes the church so powerful. Because two persons can gather and they're the church. They're having a service right there. Because what Jesus said, where two or more are gathered, there I am in their midst. In their midst. In their midst. Not in a church building. In their midst. So let's not be fooled by anybody. Let's not be fooled by anybody. The, 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 the reason why the, the, um, the apostles went around and established churches is not because they establish the buildings per se no it's because the people being converted were actual jews in some instances right these people would have had synagogues they are accustomed to going to the temple all the time so they would have they would have um like places where they gather to worship that's that's just the way the jews do their thing so they allowed the gathering of the saints to continue. They themselves went to the synagogues and, 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 and spread the gospel. Right? The reason why they came up with the terms Christian is to separate those who are Jesus followers from the Jews who don't believe in Jesus. Yeah? That's how you have this whole Christians coming about. They were called that. Because of Christ. Right? That's why. So, that somebody will call you a Christian. This term was given since they were going around, the opposites were going around, spreading the gospel. Right? Since that time, they were called Christians. You could find it in Acts. You could find it in Acts. Right? Some people have the misconception that Christians, the term Christians came about later when paganism merged with the church, but that's not true. They were considered, they were called Christians from when, from when the apostles were going around and spreading the gospel. They were called Christians. Right by the Greeks. The Greeks are the ones who call them Christians because the Greeks have to have a name for everybody. Because they, you see, the Greeks are worshiping a lot of adults. So they had to have a name for everybody. So they decided, okay, these people worship believe in jesus they worship the lord therefore they're christians to, to, to basically have a name a group to, to put them in that's what it does what they decide on yeah this is what we will call them <laughs> but but nothing is wrong if somebody call you a christian just understand what that means for you because what that means for a lot of other people is not the same as what that means for you right so you gotta be careful that we are the church we are the church is a, is, is a serious matter what we should not do is give god's glory to another so do not go worshiping another god and celebrating another god and think you're worshiping jesus or, or worshiping and think you're worshiping god do not do it do not do it because you know the the, 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 the the problem with that is that you are joining in the worship of something that that you you're joining in the worship of something that you do not agree with that is profane profane before the lord because he cannot accept your worship 
right? And profane for you because you are inadvertently doing it in ignorance, but still you're doing it. And that is profane before the Lord. Cannot accept it. Cannot accept that worship at all. So here these people are purposefully doing this paganist thing. They were purposefully serving idols. They were purposefully participating in idol worship. They were purposefully doing it. Right? And the Lord said, they're doing these things that they should provoke me to anger. Yeah? They're doing these things to provoke me to anger. And behind these idols, we know who is behind these idols. The devil. He is the one who wants to soak up all the worship he could get. You don't care how he get it. And he is trying to rub it in the Lord's face. That, look, look at people. Look at people worshiping me. Look at people worshiping me. Not that the Lord is riled by the devil, but the Lord is vexed when his people don't know him to go do this stupid thing. Knowing that his wrath will come upon them. So let's continue. Verse 19. Do they provoke me to anger? Said the Lord. Do they not provoke themselves to the confusion of their own faces? So see, the Lord was not even going to waste time to not call it what it is, you know. He was going to blatantly tell them, you're confusing yourself, you're confusing yourself, you're confused. Because the nations around them know who the Lord their God is, but they seem to have forgotten. You see how funny that is? That your enemy can tell you who your God is, but you have forgotten who your God is. It's a very serious matter, you know. A very serious, a very serious matter. A very serious matter. So here the Lord is saying, don't think you're provoking me to anger. When you're behaving, when you're joining in in, in, in a celebration of, of, of defilement, don't think you're don't think you're provoking me to anger. You are doing that to the confusion of your own face. Because with, with your behavior, you're telling people that you're, you're confused. Because one way you're worshiping the Lord, and the next way you go worshiping the devil, you're confused. You, you, you're, you're very much not sure what it is that you, that you want to do. You're very much not even sure who you are. And if you don't know who you are, you know who know who you are? The devil know very much who you are. And guess what? He's going he's gonna to damage you, defile you, profane you, and destroy you. Why? Because you are, you are called by God's name. I don't you know that the devil know who you are. You see, this is what I don't understand. When some, when some Christians... When some Christians go and they telling themselves, "Oh, I'm gonna do this, but I'm gonna, but I'm gonna call it Christian. I'm gonna do the Christian version of this. I'm gonna do the Christian version of that." What nonsense! What nonsense! What strong delusion is this? Huh? How can you take a very pagan and worldly thing? That has its origin in paganism and then come and call it, slap Christian on it and decide this is a Christian version of it. Utter rubbish. Utter rubbish. You don't participate in the devil's things. You just don't participate in it. You just don't do it. Because if you just don't participate in the devil's things, because if you participate in the devil's things, and you face the wrath of God. And you end up getting yourself defiled. And you end up getting yourself hurt. And you end up getting yourself solid. To the point that you are broken beyond repair. And you are broken without remedy. You cannot come and cry to the Lord. Oh Lord look I'm broken. You the one that go and put yourself in the way to be broken. And you know what? The Lord see the confusion, you know. The devil see too. And he enjoy it because he get to spoil you. After Jesus has saved you, you then go back. What? Isn't that a confused person? 
Let's continue. Verse 20. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Behold, mine anger and my fury shall be poured out upon this place, upon man, and upon beasts, and upon the trees of the field, and upon the fruit of the ground, and it shall burn, and shall not be quenched. See, the Lord is saying, I'm going to execute my judgment. You think you can provoke me to anger? I'm going to execute my judgment. I am going to destroy every living thing. Everything. And because I'm the one who created them, I'm going to destroy them. And the Lord is basically saying, you know what? I am going to burn it. And it will not be quenched. Why? Because nobody can sprinkle no water on the Lord's fire when he's ready to rain. You cannot sprinkle water on it and cool it. The Lord is a consuming fire. When he burns, he burns. When he burns, he burns. So here, they know what was going to happen. And you see, the thing that we have to bear in mind, you see the judgment of the Lord, they're there to, you see the Bible is there to warn us. It's a warning, you know. It's a warning. Now, could the Lord have caused fire to rain down from heaven on on, on Jerusalem for himself? Yes, he could have. But he was merciful to let Nebuchadnezzar come and burn it. You know why? He was merciful because he wanted them to come back into the land. You know why? Because, you see, if the Lord had rained fire from heaven to consume that place, there will be, there will be nothing left. There will be nothing left. Chances are they himself could come back into that land. You're probably wondering what I'm talking about. Remember there was a place that the Lord rained fire and brimstone on. Sodom and Gomorrah. He rained such fire and brimstone on Sodom and Gomorrah to the point where they were done for. Have you ever hear them establish that place again? What does that tell you? The Lord executes his judgment. That is about the only place we ever know of where fire and brimstone rained on. Now, where, where do we know have fire and brimstone? The lake of fire. The lake of fire. Okay. So you understand what's going on? That the Lord could have rained fire and brimstone on Sodom and Gomorrah is to tell us the lake of fire, yes, is there. Judgment for the, for the devil and his angels. But don't think that the Lord can rain fire and brimstone on, on, on any place he desired to do so. If they decide to get on real bad, he could rain his fire and brimstone on this place and destroy itself. Because what? He's God. And who can tell him what to do? So you have a lot of people, they are blatantly sinning nowadays and they're blatantly doing what they want to do because they have this mind set in their mind that, oh, you know what? The Lord can't do nothing right now. You have to wait. You have to wait. You have to wait. And they don't know. They don't know. They ever they're making. They don't know, you know. They don't know. So when the Lord is being merciful to us, let us be grateful, eh? Because when the Lord is ready to execute his judgment, there's nobody who could stand up and say, Lord, do not do it. There's no one. He will not listen. Right? Times, times pass, his prophets would cry and beg and, and plea. But when the time comes to execute judgment, it is a time. It is a time. While the prophets could beg and plea, and he could probably say, okay, you know what? Let me give them a time, another chance to repent. But the execution of God's judgment is the execution of God's judgment, and it will not be delayed. No, sir. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. So let's continue. Verse 21. Thus said the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, put your burnt offerings onto your sacrifices and eat flesh. Let me tell you, this is, this is very, this is very, very, very serious, you know? He's basically telling him, 
understand this understand this actually actually believe in what you're doing actually devote yourself in what you're doing because you know you're not paying attention you're not paying full attention you know what you're trying to do you do not fully understand what you're trying to do you're pretending to be serving you're pretending to be sacrificing unto the lord you're pretending to be offering burnt offering unto the lord you're pretending but you're not being obedient this is where samuel had to, had to, had to enlighten saul obedience is better than sacrifice because to these people it became that they sin so much and they look forward to sinning so much because what they look forward to consuming the flesh of the sacrifice so it became a whole big shebang sin of a sacrifice eat flesh the lord is not unaware of what they're doing where whereby the obedience that is required they do not so let's continue verse 22 for i spake not unto your fathers nor commanded them in the day that i brought them out of the land of egypt concerning birth offering or sacrifices so here is what the lord telling them you see did i did i speak to your fathers did I speak to them concerning birth, birth offering and sacrifices? Did I, did, I, did, I, did I ever speak to them concerning that? Meaning that, that he delights in it? If you understand what I'm saying. This is because what you would normally find is that since the time of Abraham, whenever the Lord would have met with Abraham or whenever something would have happened, whatever it may be, he would normally go and make an offering unto the Lord. Right? His discretion. His discretion, not his discretion. He would build an altar unto the Lord and he would offer a burnt offering. Why? Because he was willingly saying to the Lord, here is my sacrifice. Here is... Because see, Abraham is a, is, was a friend of God, you know. He had the fortitude to understand that the lord requires repentance in fact this system that the lord requires repentance was in place for everyone everyone knew that that's somebody that some people go and worship idols is to their own hurt but they know what they were doing they know what they were doing when they worshiping idols they know what they were doing but anytime they anytime they face the wrath of god you know immediately even the idol worshipers what they end up what they end up doing they they run to offer sacrifice unto the lord to appease his anger see see this statement of appeasing the gods is not just a statement it's something that they used to do because when they realize that they offering unto the idols and he not letting up nothing the, the idols not coming true for them they run and offer unto god they run and offer unto god they run and they cry out and beg god for mercy even from a pagan nation, you know. Because everybody is aware of who the Lord God is. There is nobody in any nation that can say they don't know who the Lord God is. Nobody. Because the Lord, the Lord built in us that knowledge to know him. We have it inside us. That a person know right from wrong, you know. They know. Yeah? So... This is what he was telling them. Did I did I tell your, your fathers to go offer sacrifices? Did I give them anything? Did I give them any instructions concerning these things? So let's continue. Verse 23. But this thing commanded I them saying, Obey my voice, and I will be your God. And ye shall be my people. And walk ye in all the ways that I have commanded you, that it may be well with you. So here's he's telling them. I did not talk to them concerning no sacrifice. I said to them, obey me. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Obey my voice and I will be your God. There is a, there is a, there's a term. If you, want, if, you want, if you want the Lord to be your God, you have to obey him. You have to obey him. Or do you think he's a joker? That you don't know what you're doing? You can't pull a fast one on him and talk, you know? Yeah? If you obey him, 
then he will be your God and you can be his people. Right? And you walk in all the ways that he has commanded and it will be well with you. You see why it, you see why it is well with some people? You see why it is well with, with some people and, and not well with others? Because some people follow the commandments of the Lord, others don't. Some people obey the Lord, others don't. Some people trust in the Lord, others don't. So then some people wonder, well, why am I not prospering? Well, why is this not working out for me? And they're disobedient like what? And they don't even serve the Lord. They don't even trust in the Lord. They don't even call out to the Lord saying, hello, how are you? They're following after everything else though. They trusted in everything else though. And when all else fail, and they realize that all else fail, then they begrudgingly call on the Lord because what? They all stand by. You see? But the Lord is watching. The Lord is watching. So let's continue. Verse 24. But they are cannot nor incline their ear, but walk in the counsels and in the imagination of their evil art and went backward and not forward. See? Instead of progressing forward, they were backward. You ever see some kind of people? It's like they're supposed to have sense, you know? They're supposed to have sense. Like everything, they amass wealth. They amass wealth. They amass everything. They're supposed to have sense. But some simple thing they don't know, it's like this. They can't go forward. No matter what they no matter what they amass, they can't go forward. Because the simple things in life they don't know. It's like this. If you don't listen to the Lord, if you don't listen to the words of the Lord, if you don't put your mind, put it in your mind to be obedient to the Lord and follow after what the Lord has commanded. See, he said, walk in his counsel. Why? Because a man's ways is directed. How do you think that we just happen to do things because we want to? Our ways are directed by the Lord. But when you don't want to behave and, and let the Lord lead you, well, you're going to be left up to your upper right man. You're going to be left up to your own devices. Yeah? They decide, no, you know what? Instead of walking in the counsel of the Lord, they go walk in their own counsel. They go, they go follow after the imagination of their own evil art. Wherever you see evil, you see the devil. So the devil come to seduce them in their mind now. And they hearken unto him. Right? And of course, instead of progressing forward, they go backward. You see, on the surface to them, in their own mind, they think they're progressing forward. Eh? Only to realize that they're... <laughs> They are so backward. They, they, were, they were supposed to be at a certain place, but they cannot reach it. And then you know what? In trying to reach it, they do more, and they do more, and they do more, and they do more. Only inflaming the wrath of God upon himself. Only inviting the wrath of God upon himself. Only inviting God to deal with them. Because you know what? This is the delusion of the devil, you know. He, he incited to do the wrong. He ain't working out for you. He incited to do even more wrong. And even more wrong. That way we have a lot of people. They started out with a very small transgression. Before you know it, you can't even find these people's morals. It has disappeared. Mm -hmm. That's how it is. If we don't listen to the Lord, we will find ourselves in very much troubled waters, murky waters, dirty waters. And let me tell you, it goes for us in today's world as it went for Israel. If we don't listen to the Lord, we go cry later. We go cry later. But the time the Lord ain't listening, huh? he don't want to hear nothing about it. He don't want no part in it. He, he not going to listen. So let's continue. Verse 25. Since the day that your fathers came forth out of the land of Egypt unto this day, I have even sent unto you all my servants, the prophets, 
daily rising up early and sending them. So see, the Lord is saying, since the days you proceed out of Egypt, your fathers proceed out of Egypt, I have been sending my, my, my servants the prophet. Rising up early and sending them. For the Lord is who sending them, you know. And what? All the send the Lord sending them. These people just stubborn, stubborn, stubborn. You see, the people who don't know the Lord, they don't have no excuse, you know. They may not intimately know the Lord, but they know right from wrong. They know right from wrong. Right? That, that is why nobody can say they don't know right from wrong. Everybody have it built in. We know right from wrong. But you see the people who know the Lord, have a relationship with the Lord, that's why it's so much more difficult for us. You see, you see if after knowing the Lord, you go and do foolishness, the Lord is going to punish you severely too. Why? Because you knew the Lord and yet you do stupidness. That's why the Lord's punishment of Israel was so great, you know. It's because of the fact that they know him. The Lord has delivered them so many times, fight for them, shown them his protection, and they still just want to serve after other gods. How is that possible? They have it in the commandments to tell them, do not serve no other God. They have it in the commandments to tell them, do not make any graven image and bow down to it and worship. They have, they have it in the words of the Lord. Either God is a jealous God. They have it in them. And they still do the same thing. We're not judging them. We can't judge them. We are aware of the adversary. And you're working excessively over time to plague people. And to make your life um, such, such, a, such a painful existence. But you know what? The Lord is also working on your life to bless you and to give you good gifts. So we are without excuse, eh? Follow the way of the Lord. That, that we can do. In the face of everything else, we can follow the way of the Lord. Yeah? So, verse 26. Yet they hearken not unto me, nor incline their ear, but harden their neck. They did worse than their fathers. See? They have the testament of their father's error and what would have happened to them. And yet still they did not... They didn't take it at all. They, they decided to, to be stubborn. They stiff in the neck. They decided to be very stubborn. And follow after what they desire to do. Rather than to listen to the Lord. And they end up doing even worse than their fathers. Because remember, their fathers perish in the wilderness. Never get a chance to come into the promised land. They haven't come into the promised land. End up doing even worse. Even worse. You see? The Lord is not joking with these kind of things. So, verse 27. Therefore thou shalt speak all these words unto them, but they will not hearken to thee. Thou shalt also call unto them, but they will not answer thee. See, the Lord is telling Jeremiah, you will speak to them. You will speak to them concerning this word I've given you, but they will not hear you. They will not listen to you. You will call them, but they will not answer you. The Lord was telling him, you are going to be talking to, it's going to be like you're talking to the wall. It's like you're going to be talking to tin ear. It's like you're talking to yourself because they will not listen to you. So the Lord was telling him, yeah. hmm. verse 28, but thou shalt say unto them, this is a nation that obeyed not the voice of the Lord their God, nor received correction. Truth is perished and is cut off from their mouth. See? It looks like our world today. It looks like our world today. How many nations don't even listen to the Lord? They started out, they said they established their ways in the Lord, and they don't even listen to the Lord no more. You look at all the, the, the foundation of, 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 of whatever they established, and they say they were all for the Lord, and no, they're not, not, not all for the Lord anymore. Why? They refuse to obey the voice of the Lord. Yeah? Refusing to obey the Lord. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Obedience is better than going and repenting. Obedience is better. Right? 
It's one thing. When you're, when you're going wrong, the, the, the Holy Spirit will correct you, you know. The Holy Spirit will point it out to you, look, you're, you're going wrong. Will you listen though? Will you listen? Okay. And you find wherever the devil's playground is, truth is perished. Because the devil don't have nothing to do with truth. Filthy and lying, crooked. Everything about him is crooked. So there's no truth in him at all. So he don't want nothing to do with truth. And he cut it off from, from the mouth. Everybody's speaking lies. So, so while Jeremiah was here prophesying, prophesying for the people to change their ways and turn to the Lord, turn from their wicked ways, there were others prophesying other things. There were others prophesying other things, lies, speaking lies. But they're not lost on the Lord, eh? They're not lost on the Lord. So let us continue. Verse 29, cut off thine ear, O Jerusalem, and cast it away, and take up a lamentation on high places. For the Lord hath rejected and forsaken the generation of his wrath. See? So he's telling them, Cut off your hair. No, he's, no, 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 he's basically telling him, go down into mourning. And this is something they used to do when, when they're going down to, into mourning. They, if they have long hair, they cut it off. They put on sock cloth, they, you know. Yeah. So he's telling them, you better go down to you better go down into mourning now. Go on down into mourning. Where you used to go on the high places to go sacrifice to the idol, you better go up on the high place and go and cry now. Cry out unto the Lord now. Because he has he has rejected and forsaken. Yeah, he, he, he has rejected and forsaken the place because of the atrocities. So he will not listen to you. Now you're coming crying. Wrath is wrath is now taking place, and and you're gonna come and cry. No, the wrath is already. It has already started. Mm -hmm. It has already started. He decide now, you see now, I'm going to execute my judgment. I'm going to do what I see best to do to you. So, no amount of crying ain't going to stop. Mm -mm. No, sir. Mm -mm. Verse 30. For the children of Judah have done evil in my sight, said the Lord. They have set their abominations in the house, which is called by my name to pollute it. So, see? They went so far as to put their idols into the house of the Lord profane profane and then they see this 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 is in the, this is in the same time frame as when zephaniah was prophesying yeah he was prophesying about this this kind of people you are coming to the house of the lord to worship god but then look in the same house of the lord they have established an idol so you had the people going they worshiping the Lord and they worshiping the idol at the same time. The one priest is the same priest, the same priest of the Lord doing thing is the same is the same stuff priest doing. You see, rubbish, profane man, profane. How can the Lord accept this kind of thing? Never, I could tell you that. Never. So that the Lord was telling them, look, you set up this abomination. In my house, as it's called by my name, I don't want I don't want to be around here anymore. I do not want to see this place anymore. I do not want to see this place that is called by my name anymore because it's profane in my very name. So that's why the Lord obliterated it. See? So let's continue. Verse 31. And they have built the high places of Tophet, which is in the valley of the son of Himnon. To burn their sons and their daughters in the fire, which I commanded them not, neither came it into my heart. So here he's saying, I would never, ever, ever ask you to burn your son and your daughter. Never. The Lord does not delight in those things. Why would he delight in those things? Why would the Lord, having created you, Having given you your children, then ask you for your children to be burned. The Lord does not. The Lord does not do those things, ever. 
ever. We are made in his image and his likeness. He would not require it. It would be profane. It would be like the Lord watching you burn his own image to give to him. You see how dangerous that is? You see how very vicious and vile that is? The Lord does not require those things. Ever. You know who require those things? The profane devil. He doesn't require those things. So there they had these people going down into this valley. Right? They build their high place on Tophet. So Tophet is overlooking the valley. Yeah? And they go down in the valley and they bring the children. Evil. Evil. The Lord did not command them to do so, but they're following after the traditions of their neighbors. Who are the neighbors? Their neighbors included the children of Lot. Right? Those two daughters of Lot go and make, make relations with their own father, incestuous relationship with their own father to have to have to have um children is not that they had to do that they just decided they were going to do that why because they were brought up in sodomy so they saw all kind of atrocities they saw all kind of defilement so they can even though they were out of sodom even though they were out of sodom and Gomorrah, and even though they saw the destruction the destruction of the place and even though they were far removed from the place. They still kept the mindset of the place. And then they established these pagan worship where they required their children to be burned. Evil. I tell you, evil. Mm -mm. The Lord had to punish them, man. The Lord had to punish them. The innocent blood was being shed. Vile. So, 32... Therefore, behold, the days come, say the Lord, that it shall no more be called Tophet, nor the valley of the son of Himnon, but the valley of Slater, for they shall bury in Tophet till there be no place. And this is a fact, you know. This is a fact. Now, the place where Judas... You remember Judas went to a place. He went to a place and um he, he hanged himself there. Well, based on what based on what the Bible says, there there there's an account that is given in Matthew, and then there's an account that is in Acts. So what we can deduce from Combining both accounts is that after betraying Jesus, he was plagued by what he had done. But remember, the devil entered into him. Remember? So he went back to return the money to the, to the, to the high priest. They did not want the money. But he went out straight from the place and he went, apparently... He wanted to hang himself, but there may have been a mess up because in in Acts, the 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 way he died was like he had stumbled. So maybe while he was hanging himself, something went wrong. The rope maybe maybe burst or something went wrong, and he ended up being cast down bursting open yeah so in that same feel yeah that is the same feel in this valley here right the valley of slaughter and what they what they do they bought the field they call it the potter's field they bought it and they bury strangers there and in fact there is a prophecy that the there are going to be people buried there there will be no space left there will literally be no space left 
there will be so many people that the remains of them will be buried there in this place and they will not have any space because there's a valley and there's a there's a hill so from the hill leading into the valley there'll be no space there'll be absolutely no space and that's why it will be called the valley of slaughter because a lot of dead people will be buried there and strangers no less because you know yeah so this one here is a direct prophecy of what would have happened to um is you could you could say a preview of what would have happened to the to this place because this place became a burial place because the um the priests go and bite to for it to be a burial place since judas um dead yeah because it was in the same field that they end that his, his remains ended up they did not move it yeah so it's a word to the wise yeah prophecies are prophecies yeah <laughs> the, the word of god is always true so let's continue verse 33 and the carcass of this people shall be meat for the falls of the heaven and for the beasts of the earth and none shall free them away so see what he's saying no one will drive away the beasts nor the falls of the air right no one when they begin to feast on this place there'll be nobody to drive them away and they will feast to their full they will feast to their full so this is lord is telling them this is what's going to become of you this is what's going to become all right verse 34 then will i cause to cease from the cities of judah and from the streets of jerusalem the voice of mirth and the voice of gladness and the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride for the land shall be desolate see the lord is saying this land i'll make it desolate i will make it desolate i will cut off all these dancing and this 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 partying and this celebration and this, this this gladness and remember all these things were not unto the lord you know they were not celebrating for the lord no they were indulging in the idolatry and with idolatry um comes defilement so they had like prostitutions male and female prostitutions and they had included a lot of profane things so they were marrying and giving into marriage this marriage and giving into marriage included people who are already married already you understand so people are marrying any amount of people they want as they want who they want however they want yeah and celebrating and dancing continually without a thought that the lord is watching you see you see how bad it is so the lord is telling him i'm gonna cut it off i'm gonna cut off everything you see we are having it in our days now you know people are marrying anything nowadays including even animals including animals people are marrying animals you remember jesus said as it in the days of noah so it will be in the last days because men will be married and given into marriage is the same thing it's not that you see why was why is it that marrying and giving into marriage was mentioned is because there was something about the marrying and giving into marriage that was wrong because remember marriage is not wrong before the lord the lord made marriage for himself but he was referencing the fact that they were defiling the institution of marriage they were defiling it as they are defiling it these days they are defiling it now because nowadays they call themselves married when they marry to anything they fancy. All kind of people could call themselves married these days. In fact, some people marry themselves. Dangerous, isn't it? Very dangerous. Some people marry in a place. Some people marry. In, I'm telling you, it's really ridiculous. Very, very ridiculous. Everybody could marry anybody nowadays and, and it'd be okay. Rubbish. But when we see these times, we are not to be 
we are not to be dis- downhearted. Eh? We are not to be overly surprised. For the Lord tell us these things are going to happen. Mm-hmm. The Bible warns us. So do not be surprised. So as we go through today, we need to reflect on the warnings of the Lord. The Lord is warning us, you know. We do not want to fail to heed the one of the Lord until it become a point where the Lord doesn't speak to us anymore. Until it become a point where the prayers we're going to pray, the Lord will not answer. Including the prayers that are being offered up for us. Because, make no mistake about it, you know. You may be sinning and you may be doing the wrong thing, but, but someone is praying for you. Someone is praying on your behalf. Someone is making mention of your name before the Lord. Right? And because of that, you are being you are being spared. But there come a time when the Lord will himself listen to the people praying for you, you know. Be careful. Do not wait for the Lord to to, 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 to not want to hear about you. Do not. Because the time you're gonna be so sorry. But too late is gonna be a crime. Too late, you're gonna be a crime. What am I saying? Let us let us consider our ways. In the day that we hear the voice of God, let us consider to listen. Remember, the Lord requires obedience. That's what He requires. He doesn't care so much for you coming and presenting all your salary before Him. He ain't care for money. What the Lord is gonna do with money? Come on now. What, what, what use the Lord has for this money? Please, go and give it to the poor. They have use for it. Go and give it to the widowed. They have use for it. Go and give it to the fatherless, the orphans, right? The less fortunate. Go and give it to them. They have use for it. The Lord himself don't have no use for this money. If you give to the poor, you will be, you will be very happy because you are caring for the defenseless, which he loves, he delights in. And then he will give you back. Because he, he said, who oh, lend to the poor, I will repay. He consider, it, he consider it a loan to them, you know. He will repay you, right? But obedience. Because when all is said and done, no matter how many church service you attended, no matter if you were sitting at the front row, no matter if you had given many hours of your life to ministry, if you are not obedient unto the Lord, it matters not. Be obedient. Be obedient. You know, we have to be mindful. We're living in a very sinful world, in a very even vile world, you know. But we have to be mindful where God is so we do not invest the wrath of our God upon ourselves. So let us examine what we are aligning ourselves with, what traditions we are participating and holding fast to. Jesus warns us about traditions. He warns us about traditions. Be careful of traditions. Seek after the things of God. Hold fast to them. And serve the Lord in spirit and in truth. In fear and trembling. Understanding that is wrought. When it's kindled, you don't want that on you. Mm-mm. Let us be mindful. Let us be mindful. Yeah. So... In everything that you do today, just remember, you could, you could talk to the Lord. He's, he, he's fierce when he's angry. But on a normal, regular day, the Lord is loving and kind and true. He's your father. Even his anger, he's loving. He's merciful. Because if the Lord really decided to unleash on us, we cannot bear it. Eh? We, would be, we would all be destroyed. So he's merciful even in his execution of judgment. So let us understand our God. Let us let us draw closer to him so we could get to understand him more and, and, and worship him more. And let us stop giving place to the devil. Let us stop listening to the lies and believing the lies of the enemy. The enemy hates us. Why are we still listening to the enemy then? You know? Let wisdom prevail in our lives, yeah? All right. Let's pray. Most righteous and eternal, Father, we come to you. We are your children. We come to you in the mighty name of Jesus, under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, and we submit our lives to you. 
Father, we acknowledge the fact that you require us to be obedient to you. Our obedience is what you desire the most. So, Father, we ask that you guide us in being obedient to you. We ask that you guide us in submitting our lives to you. We ask that you guide us in honoring you in our speech, in our action, in our lifestyles, in our decision-making, in our mindset. We ask that you help us to understand and to also do your will. We ask that you help us to love you with all our heart, all our soul, all our mind, so that we will do the will of you, Father. We ask that you will continuously meet us and send us your words of love and comfort, but also your warning, but also everything that you desire to say. We care about what you say. Whether you're pleased with us or not, we care about what you have to say. And Father, because we do not want to offend you, because we do not want to do anything that is not pleasing in your sight, we ask that you reveal unto us anything that we're doing that is not pleasing in your sight. So that we will repent of our sins, Father. Holy Spirit, reveal unto us. Reveal unto us. So that we will submit our sins to you, Father, because we confess our sins. We repent of our sins. We do not want anything to do with these sins. Father, help us to hold fast to your truth so that we will not believe lies and we will not be deceived and seduced by lying. Father, teach us not to partake of the devil's table. Teach us to know discernment through your Holy Spirit so that we will know not to gravitate towards wickedness and vile things. Teach us not to make companions with evil people and not to make companions with the vile and the defiled. Not to go gravitating towards their lifestyle. But we shine light into their lifestyle and point out the error of their ways. But teach us not to go joining in them. Father, help us not to test you. Help us not to test you like the children of Israel did. And they were they faced your wrath. Help us not to test you. Because a lot of people are still unaware that you will you will burn upon them if they test you. Father, we we ask for your continuous mercy in our life. We ask for your continuous love in our lives. Because you know, Father, if not for your mercy, if not for your goodness, if not for your truth, if not for your keeping care, if not for your loving kindness towards us, if not for your woman, oh if not for your hand upon our lives, we, where would we be? You know? And so we submit ourselves to you, Father. We submit. We submit. We ask that you extend your love towards us. Help us to trust securely in you, yeah? We ask that, Holy Spirit, you will plant the words in our mind so that we will not sin against our Father. That you will let them come back into our memory so we'll reflect on them, weigh them in our mind, so that our minds will be filled with your goodness, Father. Right? We ask, Holy Spirit, that you keep us safe, fill us up with your anointing, Holy Spirit. So that we will be full of you, drunk on you. Help us to be mindful, to be sensitive, so that we know immediately an evil thought coming to cast it out in the name of Jesus. Because we will not have it come and pollute our place. No, sir. Mm. We're not having any communication with devils. We not have any kind of association with evil. No, sir. Mm -mm. 
we are the children of our God. We are not giving no place to no evil. No? So we ask that you continuously help us to, to discern the good from the evil so that we will know. Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for your sacrifice. We thank you for your love. Jesus, we thank you for your continuous intercession for us. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you for keeping the church so that the gate of hell will not prevail against it. We thank you. We know we are protected. We know we are loved by you. We are grateful. Right? And so as we're about to go into today, we ask of the Father that you will send your messengers, discharge your warriors to fight the battle. Fight for us. You know where they're raging. You know exactly where they're raging. You know exactly how to fight for us. So we don't have to worry about it. Your instruction to your messengers, your instructors, your instruction to your army will be such that exactly what you desire to be done will be relayed to them accordingly. We trust you. And so, Father, we will not give your praise to anybody. We will not give your praise to anything. We will come before your presence and we will declare you are our God. We honor you with our life. We lift up your name on high. We glorify you. Right? Because we're your children. We belong to you. And so we live to worship you. And so, Father, regardless of what we may encounter in life, we are going to give honor and glory to your name. We pray for our enemies that are flesh and blood. Pray that you will save them. We pray for those who, who don't know you intimately. We pray for those who their lives are so bitter and full of hopelessness that they need an encounter with you. We ask you, Father, intervene. Go meet them where they are, Holy Spirit. And give them a nudge in the right direction. We hope they listen. We hope they listen. Father, we come against everything that is evil and vile. Father, we come against the enemy and his many devices. Father, we ask that you expose their faces, the false prophets, the people that are not real and not true, but they're agents of darkness. We ask you expose their faces and put their works asunder. Let them not come to fruition at all. Because, Father, you said that the, <laughs> there is no prophet. So let their, let their line works and their line acts not have no profit. Let it come before their face. Ashes. Nothingness. And Father, we pray that you save the souls. Save the souls that are being oppressed. Save the poor. Save the fatherless. Save the strangers. Save the widows. Save the orphans. Save the ones that have nobody to defend them. Father, because you know everywhere that oppression is. It's not lost on you. We ask that you fight against oppression. We ask that you set the souls free that have been captured. We ask that you let your word continuously bear fruit. We ask that you continuously give us chances and opportunities to come before your presence and seek your face and turn from our wicked ways and yield ourselves before you, surrendering because we know we cannot make it without you. Okay? And as we trust you to repair and heal us, as we trust you to write your words in our hearts and write your words in our soul and write your words in our mind, stamp your name in us, 
in our heart, in our soul, in our mind, that we are yours. And that your robe of righteousness covers us. And not just cover us, but you have established your righteousness in us. So as we are your children, and we're looking to you for our protection and our safekeeping, we trust totally in you. So Father, we trust that in our going out and our coming in, you will be with us. Whatever we encounter, you will be there with us. Right? We trust in you for our blessings. Because we know your blessing, it makes rich and adds no sorrow with it. So we're grateful. We ask that even though you bless us, we will not look to the things you have blessed us with and like them more than we give thanks and worship and like you. Right? That we will give reverence to you, Father, more than we will give reverence to things. In fact, we will not give reverence to no thing, no? Because all things will pass away. Right? So, Father, help us to surrender to you. And as we go through today, meet us where we are. Let us have an encounter with you. Yeah? Because we're praying in Jesus' name. We are praying in Jesus' name. The only name whereby we are saved. The only begotten Son of God. Thank you, Jesus. So we're wrapping our prayers in the blood of Jesus. So we are anointing our prayers with the Holy Spirit. And we're sending them up to you, Father, sweet Savior. May they be acceptable to you, Father. And may you grant our requests, Father. We thank you in Jesus' name. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's go find. Let's have a great day today. Peace be with you. As Jesus give, so let's receive. All the best. Love you.